All right, in this video, I'm gonna be upgrading my early 2006 Mac Pro 1,1 to two quad-core Intel Xeon X5365 processors. So you can see I got them both right here. Now, I paid about $30 for, for each of these processors, so I paid about $60 in total for this upgrade, which is actually quite a good deal because a pair of these on eBay usually goes from about 85 to about 110 or 115 dollars so I think I got a pretty good deal on this upgrade so um, the first step of course to the upgrade is to uh, disassemble the machine so I'll go ahead and start doing so right now so I'm just going to set that aside now I don't have a uh, tripod to use with my camera of um, because I am uh, using an iPhone to record this as I usually do uh, because I don't have a good normal camera really so I kind of have to use this but um, yeah so the first step to the uh, upgrade is of course to disassemble the machine now if I did have a tripod I would record while I was doing this however since I don't have a tripod I'm just gonna have to cut uh, in between uh, clips which uh, I'd rather not do of course because I'd rather show show you how uh, the actual process of upgrading and disassembling the machine but um, Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do that. So, um, for those of you who have never done this before, uh, the disassembly of this machine is extremely difficult. Um, you have to take uh, all these covers off, which doesn't seem uh, too difficult, but it actually is extremely difficult. So, um, yeah, uh, it does take quite some time. It Last time I took this completely apart to replace that thermal sensor and repaste everything, it took about... Um, I'd say about an hour and a half to two hours for me to t completely disassemble it and not quite that long to put it back together but it did take quite a long time nonetheless so um, I'm just gonna go ahead and disassemble it and once it's disassembled I will resume the video and just show you around and uh, show you the uh, procedure to upgrade the processors which is pretty straightforward but uh, I'll show it to you anyway so uh, yeah I'll resume the video once I get the machine completely disassembled Alright, so I have just gotten the machine disassembled, as you can see right there. Uh, I got the uh, front fan out, uh, the CPU heatsink cover, uh, the RAM cage, and uh, yeah, and the rear fan is uh, in the RAM cage. Now, the hardest part of taking this apart that I experienced was actually getting uh, the RAM cage out. Now, as you can see, the fan is kind of in there, sort of just like halfway in and halfway uh, out the back. Now this fan is actually uh, supposed to go uh, all the way, yeah as you can see it came through, but it like it has these clips as you can see right there and they just clip into the side of the of the RAM door. Now uh, it's very very difficult to actually get the fan to move uh, backwards and clear uh, this lip right here and it makes it very, very difficult to uh, actually remove the uh, RAM slot. I guess you'd call this like the RAM caddy, I guess. I'm not sure what you'd call it. But uh, yeah, that just goes in there like that and uh, screws in uh, right there and uh, on the front here too. Into uh, Well, actually on this, on this particular system, the posts broke off, but there are supposed to be some uh, standoffs right there that it screws into. But uh, uh, it holds on just fine just using the rear screws. So uh, now what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, get the CPU heat sinks removed uh, and remove the original uh, Xeon 5130 processors and then reinstall or install the new uh, quad core Xeon X5365 processors. So I'm going to go ahead and get these heat sinks off and resume the video once that's done. So I'll be right back. All right, so I have just removed the CPUs from the machine, and uh, yeah, the sockets are both open and ready for new CPUs to be installed. So I have the uh, processors right here. Here's one of them, so I'm just gonna go ahead and install them. So there's one installed. And let me go ahead and install the second one. Alright, so 
So now that both CPUs installed, all I need to do now is uh, put thermal paste on them. I will be using um, Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste on these, of course, and uh, reinstall the heat sinks. Now, speaking of the heat sinks, we have them right here. As you can see, they are extremely big. So they have uh, two heat pipes uh, that end down here and go up here. Uh, so yeah, uh, the thermal conductivity of these, of course, really, really good because they're massive, obviously. Uh, so here's the second one. Um, I have cleaned these as well as the processors with rubbing alcohol. So they will be nice and clean uh, when we install them. So yeah, what I'll go ahead and do now is just uh, put some thermal paste on the CPUs and uh, go ahead and install the heat sinks. So once that's done, I will resume the video. Alright, so I have just gotten both uh, CPUs uh, pasted and the heat sinks installed, as you can see. So now what I'm going to do is put the system together enough to test it without putting the entire thing back together, just so I can make sure it works and uh, make sure I it detects the CPUs properly. Now keep in mind, uh, at first when I boot this thing, it will not detect the CPUs properly. Uh, that is because these CPUs uh, are only designed, well, the only Mac Pro that's designed to use these CPUs are, is the 2007 model, which is basically the exact same hardware of this machine, just with a different uh, EFI BIOS installed, so, or EFI firmware, I should say. So, um, what I'm just going to do is boot up into the OS and then flash the 2007 EFI firmware onto this machine and that will effectively make it a, a 2007 Mac Pro and it will allow these CPUs to be properly detected and function normally. Now without flashing the CPUs will function perfectly normally uh, the system profiler though will just not be able to detect what they are it'll just say uh, unknown processor or something like that. So yeah what I'm gonna go ahead and do is put it together enough to I'm just gonna put like one RAM card in and the fan in the front and then I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on and uh, we'll see what happens so I'll resume the video once I get this thing hooked up and ready to test alright so as you can see I have gotten the machine hooked up in a temporary configuration uh, as you can see I have one memory riser card installed uh, the video card is installed and of course the CPU heat sinks and their fan is installed so, let me just go ahead and power on the machine. Okay, so I don't think it likes my RAM configuration. So let me just put the original uh, four gig or one gig modules back in and uh, turn it on with just those installed. So uh, I'll be right back once I get those modules installed. Alright, so as you can see, I have reinstalled the original modules with the larger heat sinks. So now what I'll go ahead and do is power it up. No lights are on on the memory riser. And we got a chime. So let me just go ahead and switch over to the monitor and we'll see if it boots. I won't need to resume the video to do that. So let's see if it boots up. Optical drives trying to eject, so that's a good sign. Oh, and we're in an OS. So let's see if it detects the processors. And it does. 2x 3 gigahertz unknown. And of course only 4 gigs of memory. So let's go into more info. Alright, so as you can see the processor the processors have been successfully installed and are working perfectly. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is shut the machine down and finish reassembling it, and then I will boot it back up and we will flash the 2007 Mac Pro firmware. 
So I'm just going to shut it down real quick. Alright, so let me just go ahead and get the machine unhooked and we'll go ahead and uh, finish reassembling it. Alright, as you can see I have gotten the machine fully reassembled, so let's just go ahead and power it on. Let's see if we get a chime. And we did, so let's just go ahead on over to the display. There's the optical drive, so it is indeed about to boot. Let's see if it does. It has booted up, so let's go ahead and log in. Alright, so you can see that it is now detecting all 32 gigs of RAM, as well as the two 3 gigahertz quad core processors. So now what we're going to do is um, flash the firmware to a 2006, or I mean a 2007 Mac Pro. So if we go into the uh, system information here, you can see that it is currently a Mac Pro 1,1. Uh, once again, with the two 3 GHz processors installed. So what we're going to go ahead and do is flash it to a Mac Pro 2,1. So let me go and open up the utility here. I have it somewhere in my downloads. Right here. So you can see that uh, this program is designed to upgrade a 2006 Mac Pro to 2007 firmware. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So what we'll go ahead and do is select upgrade, type my password, wait for it to do what it needs to do. Alright, so now what we're going to need to do is follow these instructions right here. So basically what we're going to do is shut the machine down. Um, and basically when starting up the machine again, uh, hold down the power button and it should start uh, flashing the firmware. So I'll go ahead and select OK here and shut the machine down. So going back over to the machine once it shuts down you should be able to update the firmware. Alright, so now we should be able to hold down or turn the machine on uh, while holding down the power button and it should update the firmware. So just wait. Alright, so I guess we'll see what happens. Alright, well I'm not sure if it's working, but it seems to just be booting as normal, so... Oh, we got a second optical drive. I think it's flashing. So let's just go back over to the display and see what happens. Now apparently it does take quite a bit of time to flash, so 
Um, if it doesn't boot up here within the next couple of seconds, I'm just going to pause the video and uh, resume it once the machine has booted back up. So, yeah, I'll resume the video once it boots. Alright, so you can see here that the machine has just finished booting up. And as you can see, it is now detected as a 3 GHz quad-core Intel Xeon. Now, as you can see, it only detects one of them. Now, and you can see that it only four cores are detected in the uh, activity monitor here. Now, this apparently happens the first boot. So apparently, to, to fix this, all I have to do is reboot the system, and I will do that in a minute. Uh, but one thing I wanted to uh, note here is uh, the uh, graphics card... Uh, if we go into graphics and displays, you can see that the PCIe lane width is only X8, when it should be X16. Now, it of course was like this with the original CPUs installed. However, I thought replacing the CPUs with better ones, of course these quad cores, uh, would fix that, but apparently not. I've Someone told me that it did, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure why it's still running at X8. Now I'm going to try my NVIDIA GeForce GTX 650 graphics card in here too and see if that works. So I'll show you that as well once I install it. But um, yeah, I'm not sure why uh, the video cards I've been installing are only running at X8 speeds. It's kind of strange. But uh, if we go into the hardware tab here, you can see that the model identifier is now Mac Pro 2, 1. And it is fully detecting the processors and working pretty much perfectly except for... Uh, only detecting one of them. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just go ahead and quit out of everything and I'm going to go ahead and restart the machine. Now I may have to reset the PRAM too. I can't exactly remember uh, what you're supposed to do, but let's just go ahead and I'll let it restart and see if that works. The optical drive um, initialized twice for some reason. It chimed. So let's just go ahead and see if it boots. All right, so it booted back up. Let's go ahead and log in. And let's see what we have. Alright, so as you can see, it now detects it as two 3 GHz Intel quad core or quad core Intel Xeon processors. Let's go ahead to more info here. Let's see, just see if it's changed the PCIe LIN with and no it hasn't. Um, and just so you know, uh, I have set uh, the PCIe PCIe lane with 2x16 in the memory slot utility, so that is um, not the issue. Alright, so let's just go ahead and open up Activity Monitor again. And yes, as you can see, all eight cores are detected. So yeah, that is the uh, upgrade. It is now fully functional. So let's go ahead and quit out of that. Uh, so now what I'm going to try to do is uh, shut the machine down and install my NVIDIA GeForce GTX 650 graphics card and uh, see if that works uh, with uh, PCIe X16 in the system. It didn't before, but I'm hoping the uh, processors maybe change that. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, once this shuts down, I'm going to go ahead and install it and I'll resume the video uh, once I get the card installed. Alright, so as you can see, I have installed my NVIDIA GeForce GTX 650 graphics card to the machine. However, uh, it is booted up as you can see, but in um, OS X it still only detects it as X8. And I'll go ahead and show you that right now. So, if you go over to the, the machine here, you can see that uh, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 650 card is in the bottom slot, but it is only running at X8. Now. You can see the PCI Express profile uh, I have selected here says that the bottom slot should be running in X16. So I'm not exactly sure why that is, but uh, this card runs terribly uh, on, in X16 mode or in X8 mode. So if I just like, I guess it's not running too badly now, but sometimes the uh, 
animations will just lag with it. I'll, I'll give it a, a bit of a test, but in my experience, the Radon HD 6670 I had in there before actually runs much better in X8 mode, so I'll, I'll give it some tests and see which one I prefer and which one uh, runs the best in this machine. But uh, yeah, uh, getting back to the main point of this video though, uh, the quad core upgrade, as you can see, was a success. So I will hopefully get a lot better performance out of this machine. Uh, and this is an, an entire gigahertz faster than the originals as well, so that'll definitely improve performance as well as the extra four cores. So that is the upgrade of this 2006 Mac Pro to two quad-core Intel Xeon X5365 uh, CPUs. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video.